Good morning, everyone. Let's let's go with that one. I'm still just playing around with this thing. This is the last thing I did before I went to bed yesterday. Putting stuff in the triggers and uh, playing around with the voices. Let's see how that sounds. This is so much fun. I guess that's the car plus strong haggle.
I really like how the filters are always like I can do this with a kick or whatever. You can't let's stop that. You can't actually set the uh, resonance or the uh, uh, curve of the filter but it's always in a sweet spot like you're never running into really harsh resonances or getting into a bass register where you just completely blow out the signal with uh, resonant low frequencies like you often can do when you turn down the filter like I just did to cut off the kicks. Instead, it just fades it out, so you can use it as a performance fade instead of muting. So that's one thing I have to negotiate around a little bit with this, because I normally tweak stuff with my right hand, and then I will hit other things with my left. Here I have to negotiate around that a bit, and... Uh, stop myself and think, oh, no, I have to go shift and, you know, hit these for the performance mutes. Or, you know, you can leave it on, but then you don't have the sequencer. So it's just a matter of uh, habit and uh, getting it into motor memory. I was screwing up a lot with that the first uh, times I got it. And like Loop Pop said, first thing I did was I pressed uh, these pattern kit and I press the button here and that you immediately lose your kit. So let's say I have something I like here. The first thing I do is I hit this and I go rec and I would save it like that. Then it's saved. Same for the kit, hold rec and now it's saved. Or I can hold clear. Now it's cleared. Yep. There we go. Pattern clear. Because I already have that here. And uh if I then hit, it immediately snaps back to a So you can hear I had a lot of swing in that pattern. But you can really start just mixing together the patterns you've saved and kits you've saved. You can really just sit and throw them together after you've built up some full banks of patterns, which will happen pretty soon. I can tell already from how much I've been playing around with this thing. I just got up today, made a cup of coffee, and here I am. So yeah, let's just... Uh... So... No, wait. Why, why does this have stuff in it? Is it because I saved it earlier? It shouldn't. How about there? Right. That's blank. That should be blank too. Why isn't it blank? Oh. I guess I didn't clear it. Okay, now it's cleared. There we go. So let's put some short decays and just go with the first algorithm and first parameter on each one because no particular reason. And um, turn on the drives, turn on the levels a bit. And there, so that should be somewhat neutral. Parameters. Okay, so let's just put some kicks in there randomly and uh, set the last step to be uh, so last step, last step. Actually, let's just make it really weird and. Um, oh, I still have mod steps. Okay. So, how did I do that? I thought I would... How do I do this? Oh, I can uh, do this. And 
then I clear it for all those. There was a shift function and you clear all the mod steps for all the tracks, I think, but whatever. That works. I'm still memorizing those uh, shortcuts. some mod for that so uh, you have uh, these marked down here we can do tune and that should be affected by 30 percent and let's make it sort of a squiggly random whatever that is i don't know what that shape is I don't think there's a way to clock sync this, at least if there is, I haven't found it. But um, I can just go by ear. Let's add another mod uh, for the uh, VCF. So that should add some slight variation to the VCF. Let's make it a bit more. Let's do that for the for the kick. Let's do decay. Is that doing anything? shape I was using here that didn't work out. No, it's just more of a triangle. So that works. Have a nice uh, smooth variation. <laughs> I do that sometimes. I turn it off and I accidentally flip a switch for the filter. Just roll with it. Yeah. Let's let's do that. Let's decay. some of that. And um, in the same way we can record uh, the there we, we have recorded some triggers. See what that sounds like.
sounds better. It just sounded kind of repetitive and uh, boring the way it was set. This may not be the most amazing sounding jam ever. But, um, oh, I recorded that because I'm in rec. Okay, right. How would I remove that? I wonder. Can I remove just specifically that movement? I guess I can just do this. there I'm lost in jamming already. That's very much this machine. It is so much fun. It's very hard to stay on track. Not that you would want to. I don't know why you would want to. It has a really creative workflow. It's a lot of fun to play with this. Instead of sitting, preparing, pre-programming, I often find that to be very tedious on a lot of uh, drum machines. I mean, some of them are just really great, crazy deep, you can do all kinds of things. You can do a whole performance in just that one machine, but just preparing the kits, it's so long-winded and tedious that they're more utilitary than fun in, uh, in the end. This is a lot more like having, let's say, four great modules in a Eurorack system and a dedicated performance sequencer that is really great for just putting down live stuff and tweaking it, and off you go. Of course, this has been going for a more random approach of let's do stuff and see what happens and tweak out stuff live. But let's say you want something more predictable, like a four to the floor techno pattern. Let's do that quick. That's a blank pattern now.
have some standard for this floor. What tempo is this? Let's see. Right, hundred and forty something is like one four five hundred and forty five. That's a that's a nice up tempo. I guess the coffee worked. But um you get the idea. It's very easy to go in either direction. So anyway, just a little gem for those of you who want maybe a more insight in how the percons is to just play around with rather than getting a script of breaking down every button and function and going through them, which is great and all. But I think what was missing with a lot of the videos I saw was just uh, they either focused on performance or they focus just on breaking down every function and kind of explaining it or maybe they just explained how they like to use it and that wasn't how i wanted to use it i don't know this is just uh, a quick demonstration of uh, why i love playing with this thing maybe that gives you a little more insight into the interface because i don't think it translates really well to video when i saw this on video and other people playing with it I thought it looked kind of confusing, but now that I have it in front of me, everything is labeled and laid out in a pretty intuitive way and just invites you to start playing with it. It took me five minutes after I had this out of the box and I was already jamming and putting down patterns and exploring sounds. And that is really what this machine is about. You have really deep synthesis capabilities for great engines and a fantastic performance-oriented sequencer. And that's before even starting routing stuff out and uh, playing with the voices individually and putting it in a mix. But it still stays within a pretty musical spectrum. It doesn't go too crazy. It's pretty much fine-tuned like that. Like I said, with the filters, they never really get into that ear-piercing, painful territory of self-oscillation. Finding the sweet spots is really easy. So anyway, that's been a little session with the Percons. I hope that was uh, informative or helpful for some of you. If there's something else you want me to talk about or do a video about, leave a comment below. Or if you want to support me, click the stuff, you know the drill. Thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you later. Peace.